Okay. It's cool. It was uh, 55 years old and got it as a child. Really? So <laughs> it's been it has been sitting in the barn for about 20 years. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if the tires have been replaced. They're pretty well dry cracked. Yeah, it has a little compression there. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Very good compression. Yeah, not bad. She told me her brother had a had a YZ80. Okay. So yeah, we kicked her butt. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it was the first year of a a manual transmission. Wow. And being the mini enduro, it's pretty darn rare. Yeah, it's four speed, right? Yeah. Four speed with the clutch. That's pretty cool. Yep, everything does work on it. Everything turns. Gas tank pretty rusty, I'm assuming. Honestly, I oh. didn't look in there. It's really clean. Take Is a look. Really? Yeah. I, I did not. In there, dude. Oh. I did not expect that. Like zero rust in there. That's amazing. Even look at the cat. Yeah, even look There's at the cat. There's nothing on the top. <laughs> That's nuts. That is crazy. Yeah, Looking I, at the rest of the bike, you'd think it would be, didn't you know. Even look in there. Wow. It, it smelled like mouse pee. Oh, yeah. So I, I did. I'm sure. It, and I, I scrubbed it down a little bit, but it's not like I went nuts on it. There's still quite a bit of grease on it. Wow. Well, that's that's lucky. Cool. I don't believe this is all the way on. I think this is supposed to go over that lip. Okay. And then being like the YZ80, the carburetor is down inside of there. Yep. Yeah, I've never seen one in person, actually. She said the seat was all intact until about two years ago when they had the storage and the mouse got in. Oh, yeah, the mouse got it. That's, that's kind of a bummer. Yep. Yeah, it's a cool, cool design. I like the the DT design on it. Injection too. Yep, yep. Very cool. Bike. Yeah, it is. All right, here it is, the Yamaha JT1 Mini Enduro. These things are pretty cool. They were only made for two years, and they were kind of based off of the DT1 that were street legal, and. Um, they said the DT1 was so popular that they just shrunk this bike down and made a little mini enduro with it, which is super cool. Um, I guess they sold a lot of these. They were super popular, and the best part was they were only 300 bucks at the time, so people could afford them, and they were better than mini bikes because they had a four-speed clutch engine and suspension and everything like the big DT1s. So these things flew off the shelves and they're super popular for the two years. So they made a JT1 and JT2. On the frame you can see this is a JT1 stamped right on the frame. And um, a JT1 means it's from 1971. JT2 were made in 1972. But you can see it's just like a mini enduro. It does have oil injection right here underneath this cap. And a carburetor underneath there. It's two stroke. And you can see there's a little mini oil tank, gas tank, a little mini seat on there. So it's definitely a very, very cool machine. You don't see these every day. On eBay, these go for right around six to $10,000 restored. So they bring a lot of money. And it's very, very hard to find them in all original condition. A lot of kids used to um, modify them, try and make them faster, take off parts. Um, swap exhaust so to find it in original condition is pretty rare especially with all the original paint all the original stickers these emblems it's super rare and the guy that sold it to me bought it from the original owner he only owned it a few days he was doing a quick flip on it and he said that that was the original owner just stored in her basement for many many years and uh, it hasn't ran in like I think he said like 30 years or something, so it should be interesting. He said he tried to start it and he could not get it to start. So we are going to attempt to get this thing to start today. Hopefully we can do it and uh, hopefully we can be riding this thing around by the end of the video. We'll walk around here. This 
So it is missing the number plate right here. Other than that, it's all original. Bang, pretty much complete. Got the steel fenders with the stickers on there yet. There's a little hole in the seat, a mouse got to it. Steel front fender. Super cool design on this bike too. I mean, look at all the little components. Little brake, little kick lever. This thing's only 60 cc, so. They're supposed to go like 50 miles an hour too. Pretty fast. With a little shifter on there. <laughs> Definitely a unique bike. All right, so I paid $500 for this thing. The guy said he paid 300 for it. And uh, like I said, he bought it from the original owner. Let's just check out the VIN here quick. You can see JT1058632. So it's only a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine digit VIN on there. One thing that was really nice about this thing was the gas tank. I don't know if you guys saw me open it there, but uh, check out this gas tank. She is rust free in there. That has to be extremely rare. I mean, that has like zero rust in it. That's I've never seen this old of a bike with zero rust in a gas tank. So they must have drained it completely out and had no moisture in the basement whatsoever. I mean, look at that. <laughs> so that's gonna make my life a little easier. And then look at the gas cap. No rust in there at all. So that, that's sweet. That's gotta be really rare. Um, I believe this is a kill switch right here. And it might be faulty. So that leads down to this wire, which leads down to the coil right there. So I'm guessing that's a kill switch. The guy said he was getting intermittent spark. So he's thinking that's why it didn't start up. But it does have the clutch and it has a manual four speed. And the brake does work too. And the throttle works. So we're off to a great start. Um, let's first check the spark. Could just be like a foul plug too. He said he didn't dig into this thing at all. Could be the spark plug boot, could be a foul plug, could be a lot of different things, so. We'll see. He said when he first got it, it smelled exactly like mouse peeing. So he tried to clean it, but it's still there, the smell. All right, so it looks like a crappy plug in here. Check out this plug. That's interesting. AC. Never heard of that plug before. Looks like there's gas on it. It's definitely getting gas. Let's see what we get for spark. Kick this thing over. Let's kind of see what we can I'm not getting anything. See if we press the kill switch. Feels like it has decent compression when I have the spark plug in, so hopefully we've got enough to start it up if we can get spark. But there is zero spark, so. First thing we're gonna do is try a different plug. And then go from there. We're gonna check all the easy stuff first before digging into the points area. I think this thing has points. Doug, let's see if we can get some spark happening. It 
doesn't look like it. Before we keep on kicking it over, let's get some oil down the cylinder. Lube that up, it's been sitting for a long time. Plenty of oil in there. Turn the gas cap off too. Kick it over a couple times here. Get that piston nice and lubed up. Sounds pretty smooth in there. All right, so we're not getting spark. Let's move on to the spark proof boot. Solve this problem here. Let's see if it's one you can just twist off. It looks like it. See not much wire exposed in there, a little bit. Yeah, there's quite a bit exposed. We're gonna cut off a quarter inch of that wire. That does the trick. And now you can see all the wire exposed right in there. And I'm gonna put that back on. Check spark again. Doesn't look like it. Ground it out better. Yeah, new spark. So let's move on to the Kill switch, which I think is a kill switch. Let's see if that's grounding out anything. Okay. Still has the original hardware on it. That's pretty cool. Another cool little feature, that little tab pulls out. The seat should pop up. Let's see. Comes off. Cool. The wire, you follow it down to right here, where it looks like it leads to the coil and grounds that out. Guessing. Sure looks like it, right? <laughs> so let's try disconnecting that. Let's try disconnecting this wire. We're just gonna see if we have spark. These wires aren't connected to anything. Wonder what those go to. Huh. Red and brown. So it's only this black wire. So still no spark. Alright, so this plate 
comes off. The guy said he never dug into it, so. I just can't believe he never dug into it. I'd be so curious. That's why this thing didn't run. Yamaha plate still looks pretty good. All right. Get you guys a little closer. So there is the flywheel right there. Looks pretty decent. And if we're lucky enough, we can get to the points, which are right there. They look pretty dirty. So let's just see if we can open that up and clean those out a little bit. Get in there with some sandpaper, clean those up. We'll see if that does anything for us a little bit. Let's get them exposed here. It doesn't look like you tried cleaning the points. That's good. Give us a little hope here. Just getting all the crud build up off first. Come on, be there, be there. No. Oh, I see some. Looks like the spark plugs fell out. Try a new spark plug. There was sparking on the outside of the spark plug. And that's how I was just seeing things. Oh, there we go. There's some spark. Good, great spark. <laughs> Alright, well we fixed that problem. It's always great when it's just the points. Alright, let's get our compression tester in there. What are we going to have for compression? I really hope it's above 100. I really, really hope so. Even like 95, it would still run. The goal is to get this thing running and driving by today. All right, we're gonna get the throttle open. Get. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Almost 140. 133, wow, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, she'll run with 133. That's really good for a little bike like this. Awesome. All right, here is the air filter. I probably should have taken that off and looked at it before we kicked it over a bunch of times. Um, but I'm guessing nothing's under this cover. I think he had that cover off, so I'm guessing he would have cleared that out because the carb sits right here. And we have to suck in things to get into the engine. So hopefully he cleared that out. It looks pretty crusty. I'm surprised that just came right off like that. <laughs> Still have all the rubber grommets on here. It's crazy. All right, so it looks like he took out the air filter. Used to be probably like a little foam pad in there. But at least it's not getting sucked into the engine. We'll just blow that out quick with the air compressor.
pretty cool. So here's the carburetor. I'll have to see what brand that is when we uh, take that out. Um, and then the oil pump right here. Let's just see if it's working with the throttle here. And you can see it's still, still working. There's a little bleed screw right there on it. And what it does is it, it takes oil from the oil tank, which is this line. So it's just gravity fed oil to here. You want to bleed that. And once it's through the system, this pumps it into, let's see if there's a line for it. It should be into the carburetor right there, I believe. Let's see. Or bat in the back. I think it goes to the back. It might go to the back. So, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Look how tiny that thing is. Choke for the carb right there. And then you've got your idle speed control right there. Everything's working. So let's get that carb out of there and take a peek in the inside. The pump is working too. I don't know if there's anything in here. Let's check. Is this the cap right here? <laughs> oh, there's oil in there yet. That's funny. That is funny. <laughs> Thing's such a cool little bike. So to get this carb out, there's actually an access port hole through it right here. Typically they're flat heads that go in there. There we go. This should slide right out. <laughs> cool. All right, let's see what's behind here. All right, little carb is out. So now we just have to get the slide out. But if you look behind here, now you can see where that oil pump leads to. So it pumps it up through that line and into the side of the engine there. So just one screw holding that on. Take that out. Just a little sticky in there. Don't want to force it too much. Actually, a little spring that holds that in, that choke mechanism. Huh. It looks pretty decent though, doesn't it? Look how tiny that little car is. <laughs> Alright, so let's just see what kind of gunk is in there. Oh, look at that. Look, there's straight oil. If anything, it probably preserved it if there's oil in the, in the carb there. We'll tear this apart, see what's going on. Looks pretty, pretty gunked up with oil. Carb looks to be in good shape though, from the outside. Two screws holding that bowl on. Woo! Yeah, she's a little gunked up with oil. That's a cool float, though. Look at that. What the heck? <laughs> Never seen one like that before. So that just literally is a float that just floats in there. <laughs> There's a bunch of oil in there. A 
Looks pretty. Looks like it's pretty clean. There's the little needle right there. Huh. How do you get that out? Not sure. But that just compresses in like that. Oh, it comes out right there. There's a little jet. <laughs> we'll try to take that out. That whole thing comes out like that. Let's see. I don't want to break it. That's fancy. Look at that. The needle sitting in there like that. That is something. That is pretty cool. <laughs> Never seen a carb design like this before. Clear that out. Clear that out. The gasket. Doesn't look too bad. And then we've got a little air screw right here. So many turns in that was. One, two, exactly two and a half. Turns out the air screw. We'll put that back to two. And a half turns out when we reinstall it. All right, then the pilot and the main. So let's get the main jet out. Came right out. And the pilot. That thing is tiny. There's the pilot jet. I don't think I've ever seen one smaller than that. That is extremely small. And clogged. Yeah, very clogged. So, we'll go through this whole system, clean it all out, blow it off with the air compressor, and uh, we should be good. A little piece of gunk in there. Overall, not too bad. All right, we got the carburetor all cleaned up, ready to go. Let's reinstall that. Look who came to check out the bike. Little Vin. Let's see what he's doing. He's sniffing it. What do you think? <laughs> you like this one? He's out. Must not like it. Oh, he's back. Oh, he wants to go on the stand-up jet ski now. He thinks he did a good job surfing last video. Now he wants to try the stand-up. <laughs> we'll go a different day, buddy. We gotta finish up the bike. All right, so before we install the carb, I just wanna see if the oil line has oil coming through it. See it's dripping oil pretty good. Oil is definitely coming out of there. All right, now we gotta work in this gas tank. So, we can see the inside is perfectly clear. Let's just inspect it one more time. Just gonna see if there's any debris in there that we have to get out. Man, that is so clear. Yeah, you can see the pet pack down there. There's zero rust in there. So, <laughs> I, c I just can't believe that's that clear. Make sure there's no crud at the bottom of that. Because we don't want it going into the carb. And there's no fuel filter on these. So. Let's 
see. Yeah, look how clean that is with the original little filter right there. That's crazy. There's a little bit of crud in there, I can see. But nothing that crazy. Well, that's it. Not a whole lot. <laughs> Let's uh, open up the peacock and just see what's inside. Hopefully we can get this bowl off of here. Oh. Pretty tight. I don't want to break anything. Oh. That's an on there. Open that up. On the back with the spring. Holding that front piece on. Look how nice and clean that is in there. <laughs> it's unbelievable. All right, let's get a little gas in here, just to confirm it holds gas. Let's see if that pet cock works too. We're using some premix 40 to one, just until we can confirm that the oil pump works. Nothing's leaking yet. We're going to check and see if the petcock works now. So fuel on, it's this way. There we go. You guys can see that or not. So, petcock is working. Not leaking. So we can hook up our gas tank to our gas line. We confirm spark, we confirm it's getting fuel, and we confirm it's got 133 pounds of compression. So she should fire up. Let's see what happens.
That is nasty. It was clogged the exhaust with a bunch of mouse turds. Or poison, it looks like almost. I gotta bury that before Vin gets it. Check that out. I think they shoved mouse poison in here. Alright, I set the idle, so hopefully it idles now. Get the exhaust cleaned out. It's uh, pooping out a bunch of poison. It looks like looks like the mouse took the poison into the pipe and buried it in the pipe. But it's just spurting out all these little pebbles that are green. So I'm guessing that's poison. But um, yeah, she runs really good. Idles perfectly. So we are going to get everything put back on it. We've got to check the oil yet in the case. There was some in there. Just we'll change that out before we take it for the first ride. But it sounds awesome. <laughs> That's like the first start in 30 years. That's crazy. All right, drain plug for this thing is right there. You can kind of see it through there. 17 millimeter. We already got it loose. So let's just see what's in there. There wasn't much on the dipstick, but there was there was a little bit. Looked kind of gray to me. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of oil in there, so that's good. Ooh, a couple metallic flakes coming out. Not a whole lot though. A little metallic-y. Alright, this one actually comes with a dipstick, which is nice. Get our funnel in there. Putting 600 milliliters in, so let's see up to the 350 mark. We want to go using wet clutch oil. Let's see where we're at right there. A little bit more. All right, oil change is done. Let's go test drive this thing. Hopefully it moves. All right, we're gonna let this thing run for a little bit, get her warmed up, and then we'll take her for the first ride, and we'll see if she moves.
clear this guy up here.
first ride on this thing went really well. It runs perfect. It's not leaking anything, no oil leaking, nothing. Shifts through all the gears perfectly. And this thing is fast if you can get it up to speed. It is really fast. It's got four gears, and I think I only got it up to third gear, and it was going probably 30 miles an hour in third gear. So I'm guessing this thing would go pretty, pretty fast. Um, but yeah, it's running perfect, starts right up every time. So this one is fixed. It was definitely a fun bike to go through, and uh, this one I'm adding to the collection because I've never seen one, and I'll probably never find another one in this complete condition that's all original. I know a lot of people redo them, but this one's all original, and I'm just gonna leave it like that because I like the way it looks. Thanks for coming along and uh, fixing this thing with me. It was definitely a fun bike, and you really don't see too many of them. It's got a super cool look to it. So anyway, thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing, stay tuned for next one, and until next time, we are out.